Do you all remember, let's put that picture up there, George W. Bush, when he was in a foreign country, a man stood up and took a shoe and threw it toward him, and he dodged, and it barely missed him. Now, our country just looked at that like, wow, you know, we did, we, it was on the news, of course, y'all remember that? Uh, but our country doesn't really look at it the way that the country where George Bush was took it. Because you see, when someone would take a shoe and throw it at someone, it's actually releasing a curse upon that person. Everybody say, wow. wow. Okay. So, I want to talk to you about what is called the Sandal Covenant this morning. And in other countries besides America, we look at uh, shoes and things differently than they do in other cultures. So with that, I want to show you scripturally how that Jesus, how that Moses, how that most people in the Old Testament as well as in the New Testament would have looked at simply shoes or sandals. Everybody say, wow. wow. Okay, so here we go. Uh, as you look at sandals and we see Moses is instructed by God to take off his sandals for the place that he was standing was on holy ground, where he was. Now you notice uh, he didn't tell him to, to bow down, he didn't tell him to do anything like that, but he, he tells him to take off his shoes and the place that he was standing was holy ground. As we think about that, what was God saying? Most of us think, well, you know, Moses as well as others, as, as we look at foot washing, as we do these different things, we look at it as a sign of respect as a sign of honor. Isn't that what most of us have thought? Uh, that this is a way of respecting someone or honoring someone. Well, actually, when Moses took off his, his shoes, it was literally God saying, I'm getting ready to give you an inheritance or property. Everybody say, wow. Shoes were always the significance of property. When something belonged to someone, but it also was a sense of respect. When you entered into someone's property or their inheritance, you would take off your shoes. But when someone was handing you shoes, it was saying, I'm getting ready to give you an inheritance. And Moses, he was getting ready to receive something. Now, here we go. He was getting ready to receive the very calling of God to take him into new places with boldness and with the unction of the Spirit of God. God was getting ready to make a covenant with him and saying the very souls or the very souls of your sandals wherever they tread it shall be yours. Everybody say inheritance. Okay. So when the man picked up the shoe and threw it toward George W. Bush he was releasing a curse saying what? That you will not inherit anything. Nothing is going to be yours. Everybody say what? Okay, so let's, let's go further with this because I want you to see what I'm talking about. What is it? What is this that, that we are looking at? There, uh, uh, when someone gave someone a shoe, it was an ancient custom of where you were exchanging and taking property. As you go to the book, uh, of, 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 uh, as we go through Scripture and we see uh, different people, let me get there first. <laughs> here we go. Uh, we, let's go this back here. Uh, Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals or your shoes, for the place you're standing is holy ground. Removing one's sandals was a sign of respect toward the superior or toward a person's dwelling. So sandals were often removed before entering into someone's home simply because this was their property and not yours. So when God was telling Moses to take off his sandals, he was saying, this is my place, this is holy ground, and out of respect you will take this off. But God through that still gave him an inheritance. Everybody say hallelujah. All right, let's keep going here. So Ruth chapter 4 verses 7 through 8, if you go there. Ruth chapter 4. Now there was a custom in the former times in Israel concerning redeeming and exchanging uh, to confirm anything, one man took off his sandal and gave it to the other, 
and this was confirmation in Israel. Therefore, the close relative to Boaz said this, Buy it for yourself, and he took off his sandal. When Boaz was literally purchasing Ruth, what he did is he took off, this other person took off their shoe and exchanged and said, guess what? This person now is going to be your property. Everybody say hallelujah. Now I don't understand that. In the Old Testament, that's the way it was. The women were property. Everybody say help us Jesus. <laughs> Amen. That's the way it was. I'm just preaching the word here, okay? And, and so with that, we see Boaz literally purchasing her and saying to this kinsman, that, that I'm going to be the one that takes care of her, but how did it, the transaction take place? It took place through the exchanging of a sandal. Everybody say hallelujah. Okay, so what we have here is this sandal covenant. It's a covenant that declares inheritance. It's a covenant that de declares respect and honor as you enter into someone's home. And we see this in, in many customs. Now we find John the Baptist. John the Baptist comes on the scene. What does he say? He who comes after me, whose sandal strap I'm not worthy to unloose or carry, he says, he shall what? Baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. It's not by accident that John was talking about sandals. Because you see, Jesus the Messiah was getting ready to walk in places that John could never walk. He was getting ready to do things that John could never do. And with that, he declares what Jesus is getting ready to do, and that is to give an inheritance through the Holy Spirit. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, John knew the Messiah was getting ready to go into new territories. He knew that he was going in places that he would never go. He knew that he would take land... Uh, that he would walk in an anointing like no other before him, and he would be able to baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Everybody say glory. glory. Now, I want you to see a pattern here. There's a pattern that is developing as we look at the sandal, and the sandal is that which declares inheritance. I have sandals that I've placed up here uh, on the altar and I have a problem throwing away sandals now because I know what sandals mean so I've got sandals everybody say glory <laughs> I even wore sandals today because I was preaching this and I knew somebody oh man look how the preachers dress today but I put a suit on and I put my sandals on it just didn't look the same you know what I'm saying I looked funny so I thought I'm just going to at least put blue jeans on and do this uh, but as, as we look at sandals, they declare inheritance. And, and so I can take this sandal and I can put it here. And I can take this other sandal and I can put it over here. And what I'm doing, if you came into an area, if you were a Bedouin and you were walking into someone's land, you were literally declaring your property lines. What belonged to you? Everybody say hallelujah. Now I'm not saying that this altar belongs to me because it belongs to God, but I'm just using this as an example. So if you were a Bedouin and you were out in the wilderness and you walked upon someone's sandal, you would say, oh, I'm getting ready to go into someone's territory. It's how that they literally mark the boundaries of property. Okay? So when you were trying to sell something, this is why we see Boaz is receiving this sandal because he, this man's giving up property. Everybody say, wow. This is why. It's because he's giving up that which is his inheritance. Okay. So, we find in the New Testament, there's a parable that Jesus gives. And we've already talked about one part of this, is, is the outer garment, the, the garment uh, of identity. And so, we are to put on the identity of Christ. The next uh, part that the, 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 in the parable of the, the, uh, the uh, prodigal son, he puts on the garment. He's also what? To put sandals upon his feet. Now as we read that, that, that doesn't mean anything to us. But I don't want you to understand what the father is doing is he is restoring the inheritance of the son. 
Y'all are going to get this in just a second. He's restoring the inheritance. That which had been taken away and that which had been lost was now being restored by the Father. The Father said that he was lost and, 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 and now he's found. He was dead, but now he's alive. And he wants to do, he's, he places the garment upon him. He places sandals on his feet, simply saying, I am giving you back your inheritance. There's something special about the sandal in that covenant in, in, in that group of people. They understand this and they knew this, but in our own culture we thought, well, you know, he's just protecting his feet. Oh, how wonderful that is. No, he's saying that which was lost is now being restored. Now, I don't know about you, but I was a person that was lost. I was a person that did not know who Jesus was. And because of that, Jesus came alongside and, and He saved me. And when He saved me, he, he did something that just literally transformed my life. Now, I want everybody to say the word sozo. The Bible says, Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word sozo is the word that is used there in the Greek, and it's holistic. And it means saved, healed, delivered, and set free. So part of our salvation is just not coming to the altar and being born again. A part of our salvation is healing, deliverance, and freedom. And that's ongoing, folks. I found out in my life there's times where uh, even though I understand that I have an inheritance of God, that there's times that I have taken off those sandals. And I have not walked as a son of God. And I didn't walk in the understanding of that which God wanted to give to me. I didn't walk in that inheritance. Are y'all getting this? So I placed those sandals aside when I was struck with Crohn's disease. I was told that it was incurable. There's no way that it could possibly be cured. And then some students at Hawassi College gathered around me and they began to pray and call down heaven. And I was instantly healed of Crohn's disease. And once again, I, I understood that a part of the inheritance that I have as a child of God is that God heals. It's a part of my salvation. It's a part of my inheritance. I'll never forget a man in one of my churches by the name of James. <laughs> James was... Uh, the kind of person, his wife came to church, but he never would darken the door of a church. And the doctors had not given him very long to live, and so his wife asked me, can you please go talk with him as he's in the hospital? So I made my way into the hospital room, and I said, James? And he looked up and he saw me, and he gives me that look that most of y'all give me when the preacher walks in the room. Oh, Lord. It's the preacher. And he looked up and I just saw his countenance change. And then I thought, well, I'm going to change the atmosphere in this room. And I looked at him and I said, well, I said, I'm here selling life insurance and fire insurance and the benefits are out of this world. And James began to get tickled as he was there in the hospital bed. Just began to get tickled. And, and with that, uh, because I said what I did, I was able to walk with him and talk with him. And before the day was over, listen, he had sandals on his feet. Amen. You're going to get that in just a second. He understood his inheritance. And, and see, when you don't have sandals, especially in the culture, the, of the ancient culture, it meant that you were a slave or a servant. When you did not wear sandals... We did not have shoes when you walked away around barefoot. So the prodigal son, that's the first thing that his father notices. That he realizes that he does not have... Get shoes and place them on him. He understood that he had been a servant and a slave to the world. Y'all getting this yet? That day as I was in James's room, what happened is he put sandals upon his feet and it was at that moment he understood his inheritance and he went on to be with Jesus. Now, James was a carver. Hmm. This is one of his carvings right here. 
one of these things that sometimes you get as a pastor that you treasure. It, it, it doesn't mean anything to anyone else, but it means something to me because I know the story. And I was able to do his funeral with excitement because I knew he had given his heart and his life to Jesus. And at his funeral, I held up a log, just a, a plain old log. And I said, you know, as I look at this, it's just a piece of wood. There's nothing to it. I said, but James would pick this up and he would look at it and, you know, he could, he'd begin to work on it and he'd make something beautiful out of it. And I began to tell them the story of me walking into the room and sharing with James. And I said, I walked into the room and he was nothing but a piece of wood. But bless God, now God's made something beautiful out of his life. Someone say glory. Amen. Come on. I want you to think about that because now you and I are people of the covenant and because of that we have an inheritance. We are sons and daughters of God but we forget often of the mighty works that Jesus has done for us. This morning, I want you to know that first of all, Jesus Christ is here to save you. That you can repent of your sins and that the sandals can be placed upon your feet. And you know, when anybody here, here have tender feet when you walk outside on rocks? Isn't it great to have some shoes on? And not have to worry about where you're stepping and where you're walking. When you don't know Jesus, that's what life is like without sandals, without the sandal covenant. You're enslaved to the world and everywhere you walk, it's, it's a step that you're having to look at and examine and, and wonder what's coming next. Wonder what you're going to step on. Wonder what you're going to get into. You're going to get this in just a second. But the moment that you give your heart and your life to Jesus and you move out of that place of slavery to the world, all of a sudden you know who you are in Christ. You know that you are more than a conqueror. You know that you're a child of the Most High God. Amen. Amen. So this morning I challenge you in the name of Jesus to look at your life. Put on the sandals and realize that you are a person that wants to, that needs to be a part of the inheritance that God has for you. Not only did Jesus come to save you, but this morning Jesus is here to heal your body. That's a part of your inheritance. It's a part of what Jesus did while He was here and He continues to do today. Jesus is still in the healing business. And by His stripes we were healed. It's already been done. It's a complete work. When Jesus Christ died on the cross and when He, he bore the lashes upon His back, I want you to know that was for your healing. That there is no infirmity that is too difficult for Him to heal. Jesus has healed me time and time and time again. It's like something, the enemy will attack me somewhere and Jesus will come along, boo, I'm going to take care of that one. Hallelujah. It happened time and time. I had an enlarged heart, told me I'd only lived to be at the age of 55. If I didn't have major surgery, open heart surgery, and went to the doctor and, uh, over in Johnson City, and when they took me in, we got your records here, but it doesn't look like the same heart that we have over here. I see the, the exams here, but as I look at this, there's no way. I'd had seven strokes. I'd had a heart attack. And here, he says, you have a heart of a 25-year-old. And Jesus healed me, and I didn't even ask for it. Didn't even know he did it. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus is still in the healing business. But not only that, He's here to deliver you. 
This is a part of your inheritance. He's come to set you free. Some of y'all are in so much torment, mentally, in your mind, you're carrying so much garbage that you're not willing to, to surrender and give it to God, that you think that you're supposed to be in this place of torment your whole life, but i got news for you, Jesus has come to set at liberty those who are captive. To set the captives free. We see where Jesus enters into his own hometown. The very first message when he gets up and speaks the word of God from the Torah as it was handed to him was the message of salvation. The whole complete message telling what he had come to do. To save, to heal, to deliver, and guess what? Set free. Ah, can I keep going? Let me go further with this to show you the price that Jesus paid in order that you could be set free and saved and healed and delivered. Jesus Christ Himself went into a home of holy men. Pharisees. And when He entered in, they were there really to entrap Him. But a woman breaks into the room with her own tears and she begins to wash the feet of Jesus. There was a reason for that. I want to talk about that for a minute because we think that this woman just sat there and cried and she, then she took her hair and, and she wiped. No, you would literally carry your tears in a vial. Every tear that you ever shed would be carried in a vial and you would carry it and it would be placed in the grave with you when you died. They would store the tears. So when someone mourned, they would, they would sit there and they would literally capture every single tear in a bottle. So this woman comes in and what she does is she breaks open a lifetime of sorrow. A lifetime of hurt, a lifetime of pain. Y'all gonna get this in just a minute. And she breaks that and pours it out over the feet of Jesus. Why? Because Jesus was getting ready to walk in a place where you and I would never walk. He was getting ready to go through suffering for you and I so that we wouldn't have to suffer. Not only that, He was going to die upon the cross and He was getting ready to enter into a place and He was going to enter there so that you and I would never have to enter there. So she was taking her tears and pouring out her sorrow on these feet. Why? Because in the future, Jesus Christ was walking into a place and that place no longer has dominion over you and I. The place called Sheol or Hades, it no longer has dominion. It no longer has power. It no longer has authority. Death no longer has a sting. Victory is not there any longer. Why? Because Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, walked into that place. He walked in with authority and power. And we know that those were of renown. In Matthew it talks about how that they literally rose up out of the tombs and walked. Don't believe me? Read it. Why? Because when Jesus walked in there, death no longer had a hold on them. And you had your first mini rapture and resurrection. Come on, y'all. <laughs> Jesus walked in a place so that it would no longer have control or power or authority over us. Y'all getting this yet? 
Moses was told by God, every place the sole of your feet shall tread, it shall be yours. He, he told the exact same thing to Joshua. I, I'm getting somewhere. We're going to get there. Give me a second. <laughs> And Jesus, here He is, His feet were precious. But there was a night when He was with His disciples that He was challenged by Peter. And Peter did not want Him to wash His feet. And Jesus said, unless I wash your feet, you will not have any part with Me. What was He saying? You will not have the inheritance that actually belongs to you. We have looked at foot washing the wrong way, folks. Foot washing, yes, is a place of humility, a place of servanthood, but let me tell you something, that's how you and I receive the inheritance that God has for us. And when Jesus knelt down and, and washed the disciples' feet, He knew after His resurrection what was going to happen. They were getting ready to bring the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. They were getting ready to walk. And where they walked, they would claim that place. They would claim the areas. They would claim territories. They would come literally against the enemy, defeating Him wherever they were. And you and I need to have that same mentality as the sons and daughters of God that God has placed sandals upon our feet he's washed our feet how beautiful are the feet of them that bring good news and now you and I have an inheritance as the sons and daughters of God we are a people of the covenant I've got a question to ask you whose shoes are you wearing The Father has made every provision for you to put sandals upon your feet. You are children of the inheritance. Children of the Most High God. And where you walk, He walks. I find it very interesting that God spoke to Moses and He said, Take off your shoes for you're standing on holy ground. And Moses went with power and authority. How much more power and authority do you and I have than Moses? Even than John the Baptist. Why? Because the one that came after John the Baptist said, He who comes after me, whose sandal strap I'm not worthy to untie or even carry, he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit with fire. And that same fire that caught the bush on fire, let me tell you now, lives and dwells inside of us. That same Holy Spirit. And where we walk now, God walks. Hallelujah. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Do you not know that you are the temple? of the Spirit of God. It is your inheritance. It's that which Jesus died on the cross for in order that you could be saved, healed, delivered, and set free and baptized in the Holy Ghost. I'm about ready to preach and y'all just looking at me this morning. This is your inheritance. We are children of the covenant. We walk here on this earth as sons and daughters of God. Saved, healed, delivered, set free, baptized in the Holy Spirit. John was not worthy and loose that you and I, because of what Jesus has done on the cross, He's made us worthy. And we can put on the sandals. We can put on the inheritance. John the Baptist only longed for what you and I are able to receive. So I challenge you this morning, do you need salvation? Do you need healing? Do you need deliverance? Do you need freedom? That's the boundaries. That's what Jesus has, has given to us. We can put on the sandals. If you're here and you say, oh, I, I put that on, but I, I still need more. I want you to know that Jesus baptizes in the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Does that mean I speak in tongues, Pastor Rick? Is that, is that what that means? No. It doesn't mean you do that. It means you have the ability or you can. God can give that, but that's not the important thing. The important thing is that we become filled with the Spirit of God so that we can become empowered to do His work and ministry. So that we can walk as children under authority, under the covenant, doing the exact same things that Jesus did. And listen, giving people who are caught up in the world sandals. Bringing them into that covenant. Huh. Look to your neighbor. Ask them, you got everything you need? Look at them, tell them you're a person of the covenant. If you don't know Jesus Christ, today is the day of salvation. Take off that which the world's put upon you. Quit being enslaved to the world and put the sandals on that Jesus provides. Bow your heads with me. If the sermon's ministered to you in a You say, Pastor Rick, I need to give my heart and my life to Jesus. I just want you to raise your hand right where you are. Don't be afraid. Just go ahead and do it. Amen. Anyone? If you're here and say, Pastor Rick, I need healing. I just want you to raise your hand right where you are. You say, I need deliverance. I want you to raise your hand. Anyone? Amen. You say, I need freedom. I want you to raise your hand. Amen. I don't want to embarrass anyone, but if you raised your hand, I just want you to stand right where you are. Go ahead and do that. And those who have your sandals on, I just want you to go ahead and put your hands on each of these individuals that are standing. Go ahead and move toward them and let's have a, a time of prayer to minister to one another. Go ahead and lay hands on each person. Feel drawn to, called to. Lord Jesus, we thank you for total salvation. First of all, Lord Jesus, we pray for those that need you as Lord and Savior of their life. Lord, that this moment right now, that they would ask you to come into their hearts, to forgive them of their sins. And Lord, that sandals would be placed upon their feet. They were lost, but now they're found. Lord, for those who need healing and wholeness, right now in the name of Jesus Christ as we lay hands on each person, we pray for healing virtue to flow, to bring about healing and wholeness in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just receive. Just receive. For those who need deliverance, in the name of Jesus, Satan, you have no power, no authority. We bind you and we loose the very presence of God over minds, emotions. And let there be healing. And let them be set free in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for freedom. And we give you praise. In the name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Give Him praise. Come on, y'all. You can be seated. You can be seated. I'm not done. Woo. That was my introduction. Amen. 
I need one volunteer. Who will volunteer for me? This morning, he's going to represent the whole church. And I want you to imagine that night with Jesus and his disciples. The whole reason that Jesus washed their feet is because he knew what was coming. And he wanted them to understand that he was going to give them authority. So as Gary represents the church... All authority and all power has been given to you in the name of Jesus, the church. And where you walk, every soul, every place the, the fo your foot shall tread shall belong to you. You shall walk in as a son, as a daughter of the Most High God. Claim your inheritance. Offer them my heart. Hallelujah. Thank Says the Spirit of the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Thank you, brother. Glory. I love you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. A closing hymn. There's a reason I picked this. <laughs> Is Yesu, Yesu. I don't know if you know it or not, but we're going to learn it. Amen? Let's stand together and sing this. And if you still feel like you need ministry, I'd encourage you to come. If you need to be anointed with oil, come. Whatever the Lord's dealing with you, come as the Spirit of the Lord would lead you.